welcome dear student standard 8 subject english today we are going to learn a new poem 2.3 the worm from english bal bharati textbook before we start with the introduction of the poet and explanation of the poem let us highlight the importance of a god creature worm let us discuss few point of this little small creature so as you can see on the slide there's a worm okay worms are many different distinctly related animals that typically have a long cylindrical tube like body with no limbs and no eye worms vary in size from microscopic to over 1 meter in length free living worm species do not live on land but instead live in marine or freshwater environments or underground by burrowing yes i hope you must know about this student but there's one more fact about the worm that is what a worm goods for worms helps to increase the amount of air and water that gets into the soil they break down organic matter like leaves and grass into things that plants can use when they eat they leave behind casting that are very valuable type of fertilizer earthworms are like free farm help and it is also known as the best friend of farmer okay so let us now start with the poem let us meet the poet of the poem the worm thomas gisborne thomas gisborne was born on 31st october 1758 and died on 24th march 1846 at the age of 87 He was an English Anglican priest and poet. He was a member of the Calvinism sect who fought for the abolition of the slave trade in English. His occupation was divine. He has written many poems such as Principle of Moral Philosophy 1789, Remarks Respecting the Abolition of the Slave Trade 17 92 walk in a forest 1794 an inquiry into the duties of men in the higher and middle classes of society in great britain 1794 forms scare and morals 1798 a familiar survey of the christians religion and of history 1810 His work was very influential work. Walk in a Forest was book of poem describing the scenery of Needwood Forest which bordered his estate at Yorkshire and he was very well known poet. Let's continue with the poem. So let us recite the poem The Worm. Turn turn thy hasty foot aside. nor crush that helpless worm the frame thy scornful looks deride required a god to form the common lord of all that move from whom thy being followed a portion of his boundless love on that poor worm bestow the sun the moon the stars he made to all his creatures free and spread over earth the grassy blade for worms as well as thee let them enjoy the little day they are lowly bliss received oh do not lightly take away the life thou canst not give thomas grisborn isn't it a beautiful poem now let us understand each stanza in detail 
turn, turn thy hasty foot aside, nor crush that helpless form. The frame thy scornful look to write, required a God to form. So here in this first para, in this first stanza, it's the poem begins by direct addressing to the poet who tells us to step carefully. Hasty food means step hasty foot means hurriedly and carelessly so the poem say don't keep your foot hurried or careless knowingly or unknowingly we will kill this tiny creature so the poet urges to everyone not to stem not to crush the helpless worm through our uncontrolled movements and if you see the last line the frame thy scornful looks deride required a god to form so here as a worm looks very scary to someone scornful filled with hate so we express our hatred that is required a god to form here it says that god only made this creature like how god made human being the same way he made this tiny creature but we show a strong dislike to this creature we neglect them but though in God vision, we are all same. So it's a required a God to form. Let's see the next stanza. The common lord of all that move, from whom thy being followed, a portion of his boundless love on that poor worm bestowed. So what poet says in the next stanza, student? It says, the God, the creator, are common for all, are same. So the Lord who created us has also created a tiny creature. And being the poet, he asks the reader to acknowledge and respect the fact that the one who made us is also the one responsible for making this worm. Yes, so a portion of his boundless love on that poor worm bestowed bestowed means given as a gift so as god love us the same way he loves to his all creature and thy being means your life the existent life of the humans as well as the worm okay let's go ahead the sun the moon the stars he made to all his creatures free and spreads over earth the grassy blade for worms as well as thee. So now what poet says here that the creator generously gifted. Gifted what? Gifted the sun, the moon and the star to all his creatures. And free creatures is a living being and it is free from God. And spread over earth the grassy blade. Grassy means covered by grass. So and it is spread. So the God says here, He Himself laid out the green grass both for the worm as well as for the mankind. Yes, for whom as well as thee. Thee means you. For every human being as well as the small and tiny creature. Okay, let's see what the last para last stanza says. Let them enjoy their little day, their lowly bliss received. Or oh, do not lightly take away the life thou canst not give. So here, on behalf of the tiny being, the poet appeals to the reader, now the reader we, to tell them, let them enjoy their short life well and not kill them. We should not take away that life which we are incapable of giving, namely life. That is, we are not capable. God has made this tiny creature. Let them enjoy their life. Bliss means joy, pleasure. Let them enjoy wherever they feel. So let them enjoy. So this, the life though can't not give. So here it says that life which we are incapable of giving them. So do not take them by crushing with their feet. Let them enjoy. Isn't it a beautiful poem? Yes. 
let's see the conclusion of it warm by thomas gisborne tell us about the beauty of nature that lies in small things it tell us how beautiful nature is when observed with intricate care this is an important point we need to observe the nature well it tell us the perspective of nature when seen through a worm's eye and how ruthless we are to kill them without our selfless noticing it yes we do sometimes yes it tells us how a worm observe nature and surrounding around it which is indifferent from the humans to a certain extent the poems ends by leaving us a message the last two line that we should we should all take care of nature and enjoy little things as a worm does through his perspective and we should not harm any creature that god has created in this world yes student so it is a message to you as well as for me that we should not harm any creatures that is living being god any animals or small tiny creatures which is made by god okay the first figure of speech is repetition repetition means repeating words or a phrase multiple time in the form so the first is turn turn thy hasty foot aside so here we see turn turn the two words are repeated twice for just better poetic effect as the next one is for worms as well as these so here again we see the word s a s as is repeated twice for better poetic effect okay let's jump to the next figure of speech apostrophe so it's addressing someone absent dead or non human as if that person or things were present so sometimes students the poet are addressing to the reader or addressing to someone which are not present there and so to that kind of these lines are called as apostrophe figure of speech for example turn turn the hasty foot aside nor crush that helpless worm so here the poet is addressing to us but we are not at the time present okay next for worms as well as thee let them enjoy their little day third o oh, do not lightly take away the life thou canst not give so the example over here is an apostrophe which addressing to us but we are not present at that particular time okay next inversion so inversion refers to inverting of the normal words order in a sentence or a phrase the normal order of the sentence is subject plus verb plus object yes student but sometimes the poet changes the order for poetic effect and therefore the order of the sentence to change let's see the example over here first one on the poor worm bestowed so the correct answer will be bestowed on that poor worm okay next the sun the moon the star he made so what will be the correct order so he made the sun the moon the stars third to all his creatures free so again here we see it's not in a normal order so the normal order will be free to all his creature and the last one is and spread over earth the grassy blade so and spread the grassy blade over the earth okay so understand each and write it down next is tautology it is an unnecessary repetition of an idea in different words to repeat the same thing in different words for example the frame thy scornful look deride so the word scornful and deride means hatred and it is used 
in a same sentence for poetic effect thus it is said as tautology so the words confound and deride has the same meaning that is hatred okay next alliteration alliteration refers to the identical or similar vowel sound in a sentence for example the sun the moon the stars he made so here in the first sentence we see the sound of alphabet s is repeated twice as well as the sound of m is repeated twice second one is for worms as well as d again here w sound is repeated twice third let them enjoy the little day again there is a two alliteration l and again t so both the words are repeated twice next the life though canst not give again here the sound of t so alphabet t is repeated twice for better poetic effect alliteration alliteration refers to the identical or similar vowel sound in a sentence for example the sun the moon the stars he made so here in the first sentence we see the sound of alphabet s is repeated twice as well as the sound of m is repeated twice second one is for worms as well as d again here w sound is repeated twice third let them enjoy the little day again there is a two alliteration l and again t so both the words are repeated twice next the life though canst not give again here the sound of t so alphabet t is repeated twice for better poetic effect evaluation the first question is why does the poet appeal to us to respect the life of worms so the answer will be you can write by your own words also students think up read the poem again and understand it well and then do write okay so according to the poet the it's appeal to us that it urges us to remember that every creature on this earth is created by god for some purpose hence respect every creature whether they are big small because everyone has its own life and they play the role in this universe okay next why had god created worms so in the first slide only i have discussed with you the fact and the importance of worms in our environment yes or no so it helps in ecological importance too it helps uh, turning out the organic into fertilizers and it is also known as the farmer best friends because it helps for maintaining ecological balance in the farm and uh, thus for this purpose god created this worm okay next does the poem urge us to protect only worms what is the general message conveyed through the poem so yes it is uh, it only reflect about the worm but in the poem we have seen it not only urge to protect only worm but also all the tiny creatures and every like whether they are big small so all the tiny creature even all human beings okay so it says that all being have equal rights over the boundaries of the earth so no one can take away a life that be like he or she or cannot give them back okay so it does not only uh, say convey the message to the worms uh, saving worm but yet it also for the human being okay and the last is the personal response that is what is your opinion about keeping animals in cage so do think and write it down thank you so much i hope you understood the poem well and i hope that you will also respect all the tiny as well as human creature that god has created